Hello, in today's video, we will discuss how to leverage Microsoft Excel to create a burn down chart. The main focus is to learn how to use charts to represent your data. All that is coming up right now. Before we start, I want to let you know of my course, Microsoft Excel for Project Managers. You'll learn Microsoft Excel skills within the context of working with project artifacts. So please see the link in the description. And with that, let's get into the video. Also, please make sure that you subscribe so that you stay up to date for when I post new project management content like this. Let's now get started. So on screen here, what you have is a setup of the, of the data that will determine the sprint burndown chart. So what I have here, and you can do this uh, if you want, you can pause and set up this spreadsheet similar to what I did here. But basically what I have is headers here. And I took the, I made the assumption here that the sprint is two weeks long. And I put the days here, uh, indicated one through 10. And then here I put in the actual dates for the particular sprint. So if you have, for example, a three week sprint, you would do the similar item or four week sprint. Um, but you just have to make sure that you adjust the days as well as the dates here. And then here running along the left are the actual stories that we're going to be implementing during this particular sprint. And we made the assumption here that the size of the sprint would be 15 story points. So I have that here. Um, listed out uh, on this particular column here with the story point estimate. And what these numbers represent here are the story points that were implemented. So for example, this story has a, a size of eight. Each day from day one through day eight, one story point was implemented from this overall uh, estimation here of eight story points and associated story points were completed here. So this area here to the right is the actual execution and completion of story points. And you indicate, you know, the day that the story point was completed. For example, this one was completed on February 11th, which is day five of the sprint. So you just enter that here to the right. Now, keep in mind, I didn't use any formulas. This is all just formatting. Uh, the numbers here I entered are just uh, standard numbers. There's no formatting behind that. Uh, down here, you have the remaining effort. And what this means is that you have your 15 point story estimate. But then as you complete story points, uh, this is this number here is going to start burning down and you're going to see that in a moment. The ideal trend number is a standard number. This is a standard calculation. And it doesn't have anything associated to do with the com completed uh, story points that you have here. What this is, is just the trend that your project should be taking as the sprints are burned down. So for example, if the trend number is 10 and your remaining effort is 11, what that's saying is that you're a little bit behind on your execution by one story point. So you're going to have to need to catch up and vice versa. If it's under the actual ideal trend, that means you're trending ahead of schedule. Um, and when you trend ahead of schedule, maybe you didn't estimate enough story points for that sprint and you can add more story points for the sprint. So with that, let's get started on the formulas. So firstly here, I need to sum up the total of the story point estimates. So the way I'm going to do that is that I'm going to use a sub, uh, I'm sorry, a sum function. And what you can do is that you can either type the cell ranges or you can just simply click and drag. And if you notice when you click and drag, it's highlighted, you get this, this dotted line. And once you press enter, it automatically totals the calculation there. And what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to do the same for this form, uh, this particular cell here. And it's going to be the same number here because we're just starting out the sprint. So the trend and the remaining effort should be the same. So for the remaining effort, what we're going to do is that we're going to take the sum of all the story points that were implemented for that particular day and subtract it from the previous day. So in that way, we can find out 
what's remaining, like what type of effort is remaining here. So let me get into an example of that. So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to have the cell B10, which is the 15, because we haven't started anything yet. But notice that I'm not making it an absolute reference because I, when I copy this formula, I just want it to be a running total as we burn down the totals for the stories implemented. So we're going to have our B10 and we're going to take away what we've developed in the sprint. And actually, I should use the sum function here. I'm going to open the parentheses and I'm going to do this particular set again. And I'm going to press enter. And what happens is, is that it gave me an error message where I forgot the last um, um, parentheses, but that's okay because you'll get a, a warning message that would help you out there. So we're seeing that this is accurate so far. We started with a 15 point story est um, uh, sprint estimate. One story was implemented, so now we're down to 14 story points remaining. So if I just click, and what I'm doing here is that I'm clicking the handle. So if you're in the cell, it's a plus, but if you come down here, you notice the plus changes to a cell handle. And what that does is that it'll just copy the formula. And if I drag to the right, you'll see that the formula is copied and all of the associated numbers are here. And the ideal trend would be at zero. Um, your remaining effort would be at zero because by the time this sprint is over, you don't want there to be any more story points. So your, your ideal number here should be zero. So the next step I want to do is to discover the ideal trend. And what I need to do here is take the absolute reference of story, uh, I'm sorry, of cell B11, which is the original estimate. And what I want to do is that for each cell, I want to multiply this or take away one tenth of this particular trend. Now, for day one, it would be uh, one tenth. Day two, it would be two tenths, three tenths, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Because you want to get the ideal trend um, of the, you know, from the original estimate, you want to get the ideal trend line. So in that way, you can tell whether you're ahead or behind of schedule. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to take the absolute reference of cell B11. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take away a tenth. So the way we do that is, again, I'm going to do the absolute reference of cell B11. And I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.1. So if you can see that here on the cell line, I'm taking cell B11 and I'm taking cell B11 times 0.1 because we want to get one tenth of the 15 since it's day one. And then in this cell, we're going to get two, two tenths of cell 15 and et cetera, et cetera. So when I hit enter, I get the 13.5. Now, unfortunately, um, on this one here, we're going to have to change the 0.1 and make it 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc. So again, what we want to do is that we want to go to the cell fill, drag it all the way to the right. And right now it's the same number, but what, what I'll do is that I'll go into each cell and I'll change the numbers. And this one will be 0.4. Point five, point six, point seven, point eight, point nine, and then finally, this would be one. So right now you see the trend line and you know, you can see it's running from 15, trending down to zero. So like I mentioned before, you can see here, uh, trend 12, you're seeing that we're kind of behind schedule based on these numbers. But the good thing is that we're not falling too far behind. We're close to the trend line until we get here. See here, we're, we're basically caught up with the trend line based on our sprint execution and ultimately um, we do catch up and we finish on time so that's the good thing here so the next step here that i want to do is that i want to insert the actual burn down chart here 
So what I have to do is that I'm going to start out by selecting all of these values here in both these rows from column B through L. I'm going to come up to my insert menu, which is here. And here you have line charts. Um, so you drop down this list and you can just pick the first 2D line chart. And when I click on that, what you're going to notice is um, you see the burn down here. What the blue represents is your progress and what the orange represents is your trend line here. So that this trend line, if you're above it, that means that you're behind. If you're below it, you're ahead of schedule. Um, so that's how you generate a preliminary uh, burn down chart. Now, the thing is, let's just fix this so that it's more descriptive. Right now, it's a bit vague. So let's uh, fix this in a way that you can present it to your management when you do your reporting. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to click on the chart range here. So it's selected. Then we right click on it and we'll do select data. Now, what the first thing we're going to edit, um, we have um, prompts for the series of data, which is this here. This is a series and we have to name them. The other thing is that we have to name the horizontal axis here because this is a bit uh, vague right here right now. So what we want to do is that we want to edit this and for the range, I'm just going to drag this down here. We want to select this particular range here. And then when we hit OK, you're going to see that the range changed from day one to day 10. That's our progress here. Now, the next thing we want to do is that we want to edit the series. So the first series is going to be our uh, remaining effort. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click series one, edit, and the name is going to be remaining effort. And then the series values are already there. Um, this is what we picked up before when we select previously uh, the particular range. So the second series is going to be the ideal trend. So I'm going to edit that. And I'm just going to click here for ideal trend. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. And then you have it here. So you have remaining effort in blue and you have ideal trend here as the trend line. And here on the left, you have your story points. If you recall, we started out with 15 stories and we burned that down to zero stories here. So this is your uh, day range here and you can show your management how the chart burned down from day one to day 10. And you can also show how initially the project fell behind or the, or the development work fell behind, but eventually it caught up uh, to zero and you burn down all of your story points on time. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was very helpful for you and please feel free to ask any questions in the comments area. Thanks so much for watching.